and welcome to another episode of Stream of Thought. Uh, we are shooting for the first time this episode outside. It's a nice Finnish summer weather today and we have another honorable guest with us. His name is Bilor Khan. He's basically from Pakistan. Uh, he's working as a PhD researcher in Finland and his achievement is that he, uh, he gave the highest civil service examination in Pakistan. So let's talk with him and let's get to hear the story from the man himself. Welcome to Stream of Thoughts. Thank Bilor, you. How are you doing? Thank you, Hassan. Uh, it's an honor to have you uh, and to be on your YouTube channel. Thank you. Uh, and it's a pleasure to provide me this opportunity to share my ideas with with your, with your subscribers. It's, it's your our channel. pleasure to have you with us, to share your story with our viewers. Yeah. So uh, let's start with, uh, tell us a little about yourself, where you are from in Pakistan and uh, when did you decide to move to Finland? Yeah. Uh, actually, I would uh, like to tell you our viewers that I belong to District Sawat, KP. And uh, I did my early education from Sawat. Mm -hmm. Then I did my FSC from Islamia College, Peshawar. Mm -hmm. I did my bachelor's from Ulami Saf Institute, mm -hmm. Jikin Sawabi. Yeah. And uh, then I served there for almost uh, two and a half years as a uh, lab engineer. And then I moved in 2019, August 2019 to Finland. Okay. I started my master's study in computational engineering at La Perenta mm -hmm. University of Technology. Mm -hmm. And later on, I moved here to Kopio to start my yeah. doctoral study. Okay, that's interesting. So you moved to Finland just like recently, not much time ago. Yeah. But how did you decide to move to Finland? Yeah. Like, what was your motive to move to Finland? Yeah, to be honest, right after graduation, uh, mm -hmm. when I was given the opportunity to serve in GK as a lab engineer, so there I got this uh, uh, this motivation that I think the best part of uh, to get into the academic uh, fraternity is to mm -hmm. just go abroad and uh, do my early uh, my postgraduate studies. Mm -hmm. And that was the time that uh, I decided that Finland is one of the best destination, uh, mm -hmm. having one of the best education system in the mm -hmm. world as well. Mm. And I think it was in Jiki when I was lab engineer, uh, I mm. decided that I think it's the right time to move on and mm. pursue my higher studies. That's nice to hear. But uh, uh, so how far it has been so far living in Finland? Uh, when you came to Finland, was there some cultural shock? And uh, did you get to integrate with Finnish people? And how is the society overall? Yeah, it's a very good question. I think uh, it was a very pleasure to have uh, get into the Finnish society when mm. I for the first time when I came here, I think they were so uh, accommodative, they were so uh, like uh, approachable and mm. the education system, I think as I said earlier as well, is one of the best. Mm. Uh, but as far as the cultural integration and uh, getting to these, with these people is concerned, I think it was with, with ease. And, and La Peranta was one of the, I think, I would say a bit more vibrant than Copio. The campus oh, was more really? vibrant as well. So I think it was easy for me to get integrated into those. Vibrant in sense of like there are more international people? Yeah. Or? They, okay. The campus was uh, comprising of more international students mm -hmm. and we would interact more with the Finnish uh, society as well because I had a fin Finnish family back there in La Perenta as well. So it was easy for me interesting. to Interesting. Yeah. So you had a Finnish family, like Finnish family friends? Yeah, Finnish family friends. Oh, interesting, yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I know Finnish, uh, Finnish society is very good to live. It's very approachable and uh, Finnish people are also very interactive. If you, uh, if, you break the, sir, if you break the ice and become friends with them, um, it's, very, it's very nice to interact with them. True, true. Um, so then you moved to Leperanta for your master's. Yeah. And then you uh, started your PhD. Like, was, were you planning at that time to pursue your career towards, your, towards a PhD or were you thinking to go back and do some job in Pakistan? Yep. Actually, I w when I was leaving Pakistan, I was clear that uh, the aim of leaving Pakistan is just to complete my higher studies. Mm. And I think La Perenta was, was, the, was, was the launching pad for me. I, mm. I did my AMS from there. And then when this opportunity came, it was a funded project. Mm. So I shifted to Kopi and started my doctoral study. But it was clear that in my mind that I have to pursue doctoral studies I think mm. and as you asked so I think the, the basic motive uh, behind this was and the motivation behind this mm. was I think in when I was doing my AMS study that I think mm. if you would if you want really to get into the academia I think mm. the best shot for you is to at least have a PhD degree mm. you know. right 
and uh, if, if the listeners, if they're not from Pakistan and they don't know, Jiggy is one of the best universities in Pakistan. The education system is very good. So and um, then your master's and then your PhD. Is it still going on or uh, are you done with it? Yep, I think I'm almost uh, there. Around, you can say, 60 to 65 percent. I've completed mm. my doctoral study. Mm. And I'm just, uh, I think, almost one year remaining in my PhD. Mm. So I'm trying hard to complete it on time. Mm. Uh, because, as you know, my other <laughs> career goals as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Hopefully, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, so when you are like most of the people uh, they are doing uh, when they are doing when they come for masters to Finland and the inter I'm talking about the international story and then they think to do PhD or find some other job uh, when they live in this European society it's different as compared to our countries uh, the, the life is different here the society is different here some people most of the people decide to stay in Finland uh, but um, Coming to the main part, like uh, CSS, if the listeners don't know, it is one, it is the highest civil, civil, civil service examination of Pakistan. And even the pass ratio, passing ratio of this exam is very low. But uh, my friend got first position all over Pakistan. So when you were doing PhD, like it, it's, uh, it's a mind consuming job in itself and uh, getting ready for CSS, it's also, I know it, it needs a lot of effort. So why did you decide that you need to appear for the CSS exam in Pakistan? Okay. Uh, Hassan, I think I would answer this, uh, would like to answer it in a bit detail because mm. the point is just to give the, the listeners a bit of uh, the background behind this. Mm. When I was doing my master degree uh, in La Perenta University, so at that time, uh, I decided that the, the dream is just to complete my doctoral study from Finland and then move back and serve in Pakistan. I was clear cut in my goal as well. Mm. And th that's the goal itself right now as well, that mm. I have to go back. Mm. So now I had two options, whether to stay in academia forever. Mm. It's a very prestige and it's a very prestigious job. Mm. And it carries a lot of weight and honor mm. and social recognition society as well. If you are doctoral researcher mm. and I think it, it's it carries its own weight mm. uh, there is no match for that as well and then the other option I had is just to go and join the civil service as mm. you said it's a, one of the prestigious service mm. so I think uh, I, I decided that the best fit for me is I think to go towards just to give an attempt uh, but mm. I think Almighty Allah was kind enough mm. and that provided me this opportunity that I was allocated and mm. uh, I think the dream was there that I think in civil service, uh, you get a bit of more, I think I would say more yeah. exposure. It has more horizontal mobility. You mm. serve in various departments. Mm. Uh, the public service deliveries, I think it's a bit at a larger scale mm. compared to academia and your audience are also mm. uh, at, at a bigger scale compared to academia. So that's where when I decided, I think I should mm. give it a very sincere mm. shot. So, uh, but it's, it's very interesting for me because um, I know like people in my circle and uh, many of my friends, international friends, when they come to Finland, they hardly think of going back to their home country. So uh, this thought, uh, how it came to your friend, how it came to your mind, did some, any of your friend uh, advise you to give this uh, exam or like your parents advise you or some other, yeah. your mentor? Yeah, I, I think I would give the credit to my elder brother, Saqib, I think who has already completed his MS from University of Eastern mm -hmm. Finland. I think he was the real, uh, I think I would say the motivational figure in this mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. And he pushed me a lot that uh, like this this job and this service, I think below you are best fit for it. And then I realized as well, the societal mm -hmm. or the societal setup we have in Pakistan is, mm -hmm. I think you weren't there to serve your public. and mm -hmm. and and. and and the security, the job security it carries and the public service, mm -hmm. as I said, the public service delivery, mm -hmm. the, the scope it carries, I think mm -hmm. uh, it has no match. I am sure about that. Mm -hmm. But as you ask about the mentors, I would give credit to my mm -hmm. teachers as well. But, but my elder brother was a key figure in this journey. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice to know. Yeah. Uh, so, um, it's like PhD is a full-time job. Yeah. It's a mind job, like it maybe it doesn't take that much labor or that much physical hard work, but it, it's a lot of mental exercise. True. Uh, on one side, uh, you're doing PhD mm -hmm. and on other side, you are preparing for the toughest exam of Pakistan. How was it? Like, how did you do that? Actually, if I like I'm also doing PhD and if I uh, think of myself at your position, it seems like quite difficult, but how did you manage it? How was the preparation stages? Uh, firstly, I would thank Almighty Allah because 
nothing is uh, possible without the help of almighty allah but coming to your question right now mm. i think what my routine was i would just share with you because it will be easy for the audience as mm. well i would stay there i would go early in the morning as we both i think we, we are yeah. almost in the same department as well yeah. so we go in the morning and then come back around 3 4 pm from the lab mm. and right after the lab i would take some rest and then i would uh, sit for for the night so my css routine was that i would work full time on weekends for my competitive exam mm-hmm. and on daily routine in the afternoon i would study for my competitive exam mm-hmm. and i truly like um, admit the words you had uttered because phd is a mind game it's a very stress stressful mm-hmm. experience like uh, right. you, you even on weekends like you think about your research mm-hmm. articles manuscript research exactly. methodology these sort of <laughs> things i totally exactly. agree with you yeah uh but uh, i think i managed it a bit smartly i would not say mm. i didn't work that hard mm. i should admit uh, uh but i think you have to play it smartly and mm. uh, i think i manage my time mm. well this is the key to success mm. time management so um if uh, the if the listeners who are listening to this podcast and uh, they are from pakistan and they are doing something in finland and they want to give the css exam would you recommend them to think of this option yeah very good i think this was my favorite question of this podcast <laughs> whoever like they are in finland or uh, because your audience are not just limited to finland they are in pakistan as yes. well all over the world so if someone want to give this competitive exam i think this is the best place like mm. the environment is no like it's perfect mm. perfectly made for study you mm. have like all the available resources here mm. just to to pursue your dreams but it depends on you what you want in your life mm. if you are clear cut if you have a clear cut goals in life mm. that like this is not just limited to i think competitive exam mm. if someone want to to be a good artist if mm. someone want to be a good singer if someone want to be like like any any profession he want mm. any skill i think this. everyone should pursue it mm-hmm. but the but the main i think the the purpose behind that should be a clear cut goal and motivation and self confidence mm. so, so i truly your your, truly uh, your purpose was to serve as a civil service officer yeah. in your life yeah. okay that's interesting um the the european life the finnish life the finnish society it's totally opposite to the society of pakistan um so when you were thinking to take this decision because it's a life changing yeah. decision for you you have to serve for the whole life there uh, as a civil service officer there are many challenges in the pakistani society as well where well, as compared to that if you would have taken any job here after phd mm-hmm. uh, things might be different and in pakistani society there might be different challenges i'm not saying that there there are no challenges but in pakistan there are different challenges so were you prepared for that yeah i think uh... <laughs> it's it's a very good point you have made that it's not the decision is not even limited to you it's i think limited to your so called generation yeah. coming generation of yours because mm. this is your decision and if you want to settle back to pakistan so mm. this mean you are taking a very huge decision mm. so coming to the point i was clear cut because i know the life standard here is or the resources or the the whatever the you call the the social welfare state it is mm. finland it is the opportunities yeah. are like i would say far better than what we had in the mm. our motherland as well but but the point is like who would go back and serve the like i think mm. this was the motivation and i would not like uh, glorifying it over glorifying this fact but this is a reality like i decided that if my job if if i decide if i already decided i have to go back and serve in pakistan mm. so then i had two option as i said whether to stay in academia or mm. whether to go and join the civil services mm. so i think i had already made my mind that you we would face more challenges mm. you would face limited resources you would the monetary gains will be far low mm. but i think the prestige the honor the social recognition it carries i think it has no match and so when your truly, motherland yeah and i'm truly thankful to allah mm. yeah that's great that's great but um, so your main motive was to go and work back in pakistan mm. so you had two options either in academia or civil service or any other job uh, but uh if you would have been offered some civil service job in some european country or some western society or western country would you have accepted that so you're i'm just trying to understand uh, was your end goal so to be a civil service officer or to go back and serve your country yeah i think the point is i would just i didn't mention first but like I, now i will tell you my when i was doing my bachelor's from gak institute Hmm. I think I studied on full fledged KP government scholarship just coming to the point. So I think nice. it's a 
we owe something like i have we had to to pay back to that society like mm. though for those people or for the government or whatever even my parents are mm. they, they are the uh, they they are everything for me so mm. they have invested a lot of energy a lot mm. of investment like they have made upon me mm. and my family circle my family friends mm. as i mentioned my brother as well mm. so the point was that not to be just civil servant anywhere in the world but the point was <laughs> civil servant in pakistan yeah. because i had i had i had uh, consumed a lot of resources mm. i would say you you could start from my school days till my graduation mm. so i think then i decided it's the right time to go back and serve and i think this was the best streamline i could serve better in my home country exactly yeah. that's way that's very nice thing that you said that mm-hmm. if you have chance and if you can do something to contribute towards your motherland because your motherland has given you so much so if you can if you have been highly educated and you want to serve your country in any way and you get a good chance mm-hmm. i think you should pursue it that's 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 very nice decision that you took um so uh, i was um, i was uh, like it's my normal uh, day routine to uh, watch some pakistani news channels on uh, my youtube because there is no like direct channels so i was watching different news channels and i saw some blips and it was showing that first position of css and bilor khan i uh, i looked at it and uh, i saw and i thought that this name looks familiar mm. and then i saw a post at our um, pakistani yeah, community yeah, yeah. page and i got to know that you got Short first team. position so it was like it was uh, it was very nice to hear mm. that someone from our community someone we know got uh, mm. highest position so how was that feeling for you when you got to know that you got first <laughs> yeah, position actually uh, i'm truly humbled by your words and the expression you had like shown um uh, it was it, it has no match even i was not expecting but it got viral for no reason mm. i would mention the the reality behind this was because actually the final result when we get in css it is mm. after the, the when the interview marks are added so okay. it went viral for no reason and even a lot of people were calling me and my brother came from helsinki as well that it's a good opportunity he was here just to congratulate me but i think it was it, it got viral for no reason and i no, think no you're the, too humble to no, say no, that no, no. Even no, passing it is like yeah, passing, is something. You I can say, say. Yeah, I just I think I just passed the written part, yeah. and then I was allocated. So as I said, Almighty was kind enough. So I think it was that's, a real experience. That's very humble of you. And yeah. I know a friend of mine who passed the CSS exam, but he was not able to clear the interview mm. process. Uh, so it's when you give the CSS exam, the, it's the first step when you clear the exam, and then you have to clear the interview as mm. well. um but uh, it's very nice to hear that you cleared both of them okay. so what are what are your plans now what are you doing these days and what are your um, future plans yeah so i think uh, now i'm here in finland mm. uh, i would like to rush my phd the mm. remaining part of my phd and go and join my common training program which mm. we have the css we had two type of training program the ctp common training program mm-hmm. and then the specialized training program mm-hmm. so i'm here just to rush out of my the fuel i have carry for for yeah. doctoral <laughs> study i should i think can i think uh, can zoom it uh, in a very productive way mm. and try to complete my remaining part of mm. pg and then go back and try my common training program on time and then i think i've decided already so i would uh, yeah. serve there in pakistan that's great that's yeah. good to know so um do you have i saw i think at your facebook you also organize some uh, courses yeah. uh, so if you want to tell audience about those courses please yeah, sure actually when i have on weekends mostly i had free time so mm-hmm. what i did i i thought why not i can i can be not that good but i can be a mentor of english sc and prc classes so i think i have already completed three batches of english sc and prc uh, classes Interesting. and i think the response was so good mm-hmm. i had already made my facebook page as well mm-hmm. so if somebody want even the, this opportunity is for those living in pakistan and for all those who are already living in finland or mm. anywhere in europe mm. and they who plan to go and take this exam mm. so i think the forum is open for them and i would mm. love to to help anyone okay know. interesting so if um, uh, regarding css if so, if someone uh, wants to contact you for some tips so uh, should we share your email address and sure. would you be able to give some suggestions to yeah. audience sure sure it will be an honor i think for for my countrymen like who are here and as i was discussing with you as well on our way here for this yeah. podcast i think everyone who has got time and i think we have a lot of time here yeah. i think uh, the life standard is good we have a lot of resources yeah. so who ever want to take this exam i am my my i am already available and i think mm. i would share my email address and contact as well interesting yeah. 
I think you are a very good example for the people who are living in a Western mm. society, but they still want to do something for Pakistan. So if you still want to do something for Pakistan, for your homeland, check out the requirements for CSS. It's one of the very good way mm. to serve your society back. Um, and uh, if you need some tips and help, you can also contact his so kind um, and humble person. He'll definitely guide you yeah, sure, about sure. the process and tips. Um, and uh, so in the end, uh, would you like to say anything else to the viewers? Yeah, anything think, you want to share? Yeah, I would have, I just have one message for like, life is not just about civil services or like academia, in whatever profession you are, and you should pursue it as, uh, as your career goal and whatever career goal you have. And mm -hmm. I think the best part of it is you should have a clear cut goal, you mm -hmm. should have ambition, you should have a dream for it and you should have the self-confidence for it. Mm -hmm. So I think you should enjoy whatever you, mm -hmm. you want to do in your life. You should have the passion for it. Mm -hmm. And then you should like, you should serve all you, whatever you have the energy mm -hmm. in it and then just enjoy your life. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's just a push that mm -hmm. you need. Yeah. You should at least, you should come out of your comfort zone if you want to do something, uh, mm -hmm. any of your hobby or any career option, you should utilize your uh, extra time in a wise way, like cut your TV time um, and make some intelligent friends and make some um, be in a good company, yep. read books, listen to different audio productive podcasts exactly. um, and also subscribe to my channel. <laughs> yeah, do, do, do this. I think I was the first one to subscribe to yeah, Hassan yeah. channel <laughs> and I was so happy to see like his podcast uh, when I was even at that time, I think I was studying yeah. for CSS as well, but we okay. don't have that interaction. Yeah. But I would follow your channel and uh, I think it's a very good activity. It can be YouTube channel, it can be it can be it can be anything. You you could be a good artist as well. You can share any tips you anything, want. It's yeah. a skill. So I think it's a very healthy. Yeah. Um, uh, thank, healthy you so thank you so I, much. Thank you so much. I wish you good luck. Thank you so much. Yeah. And it's very nice to have you in our podcast. Um, and nice to listen to your story. Thank, thank you very you. much for watching our podcast and see you in another episode with an, with then other amazing guests. Uh, until then, enjoy our uh, other videos and also subscribe to Travel with us and take care. Thank you.